What's up guys, here is 15 minutes of useless League of Legends information, episode 32. Let's go. Did you know that at the very, very beginning of League, Teemo used to have a passive called Eagle Eye where it allowed Teemo to see far into the distance, and his sight range was increased too. This is cool and all, but the only thing that bugs me is we're talking about the same guy who literally has his eyes closed in his splash art. You're trying to tell me that this guy is supposed to have some of the best vision in the game? And maybe you're thinking, well, maybe his splash art looked different back then. Nope. To be honest, it looks like he can see even less in this one. Additionally, he also used to have a passive similar to Singe's ability where he would leave a trail as he moved around, but instead of doing damage, it would reveal the fog of war and increase movement speed of ally champions. And that's not the only weird ability that used to be out there. Zillion used to have one called Recall where you could channel energy to refresh allies' cooldowns. Vigar used to have an ability that could steal 20% of nearby enemies' ability power. Ash had a passive that gave her more gold when she killed a unit, and any of all champions that summoned ghostly guard that protected her, which I assume turned into her E today. I suppose it kind of makes sense though, because when she originally came out, she looked a lot more gothy. Did you know that during the recall of Cowbell Alistar, Alistar kind of unalives or severely injures a kitten with a milk cork? It's right when he opens up the milk and then chucks the cork over that it bonks the cat on the left. And then after pouring the milk, Alistar even looks over to see what he's done. Even with that though, it's still probably not as bad as the Candy Cane Ivern skin recall. Because I mean, yeah. Yo, really quick, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Omni Heroes. This game is sick. For those who don't know, this is a heroic fantasy casual strategy RPG and it's received recommendations from not only Google Play but also the App Store as well. Now, as an Omni Guardian, your goal is to rescue captive Valkyries from demons and fight against evil that is threatening the world. And to do that, you can select a number of uniquely designed heroes and pick up over 100 different team comps. And in those team comps, you can unlock 17 different synergies, which give you insane buffs for your party and team. Very similar to TFT, actually. Omni Heroes is perfect for us sweaty league players because it offers both casual and relaxed gameplay for those who want to unlock wide. Yes, relaxed gameplay, something we all need. But what's really cool is if you still want that extra strategic challenge, Omni Heroes still provides enough depth and exploration for players to do so. Plus, whenever you're tired, you can let the automated mechanics take over and then just drop in whenever you feel like it to get the rewards they've earned. It even has a quick battle feature that can actually skip battles. That was a great time to try the game though because it is gearing up for a brand new season called Ash and Phantom starting November 17th. So now, it's going to be a crazy new experience with some solid new storylines like roguelike dungeon gameplay. So if you haven't already, go download it because again, it's the perfect time to do so. Plus, if you use my link, you can claim up to 777 free summons, welcoming five legendary heroes in your roster within the first week. Anyways, thank you Omni Heroes for supporting the channel, and now back to the video. Have you ever wondered what the worst matchup in League of Legends is? Well, a rioter confirmed this not too long ago, saying that Malphite versus Silas is easily the worst one by far, and it's so bad that it even technically takes the top three spots because it's the worst in the top lane, the mid lane, and the jungle. This poor rock has a 43% win rate versus Silas, but honestly, it makes Makes sense. I mean, when you get the best part of Malphite's kit while building full AP without any repercussions, it's kind of GG. Additionally, a Redditor a while back posted the stats for the top 25 worst matchups past just Silas and Malphite, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Malphite versus Silas was obviously one, and then the second worst matchup was Yorick versus Aurelia, which also makes complete sense. I mean, Yorick's whole advantage of getting all these extra minions to help push and do damage literally gets turned into a handicap. Anyways, third is Mundo versus Gwen, fourth is Ramus versus Lilia, fifth is Alawi versus Yorick. Sixth is Trendemir versus Malphite. Seventh is Vlad versus Malzahar. Eighth is Aurelia versus Warwick. Ninth is Malphite versus Sion. And tenth is Renekton versus Alawi. You can feel free to read the rest if you want. Honestly, the biggest takeaway out of all this though is the fact that 90% of the matchups are in the top lane, which further just concludes that top lane is the worst lane to get counterpicked in the game. Did you know that in 2017, someone got so mad at playing League of Legends that they actually rammed their head through a computer monitor? Yeah, this dude from China got up and slammed his head so hard into the monitor that it went all the way through and made a massive hole in it. I especially like how this guy down here has zero cares about it though and is just focused on his game. Anyways, the dude ended up having to go to the hospital, of course, but in the end, he was okay. All right, here's some interesting world's facts so far. Believe it or not, Blue Side has a ridiculous 61.8% win rate up until now. Like I knew it was bad, but not that bad. Additionally, the first dragon has gone over to the red side 56.6% .6 of the time. First Herald goes over to blue side 64.5% of the time, which makes sense because usually they'll just trade them. The first tower goes to the blue side 52.6% of the time, and then Baron has gone over to the blue side 58.9% of the time. Infernal Drake has also been killed the most at 65. There are also a few other random facts here, but I'll let you pause if you'd like to see them. So in my last useless video, I talked about how you could use Diana's Q and look across the map for extra range. But then this person brought to my attention that you can actually also extend her range on her Q by flashing sideways 
sideways. As you can see, my Q clearly can't hit from here, but when I flash sideways for some reason, it gets a huge extension in range. I also tried doing this forward just to make sure it's not a flash mechanic, but it wouldn't do anything if you just flash straight. I guess this is just classic League of Legends. So I actually didn't know this until I saw this post the other day, but when Nico turns into a minion, you can smite them for the same damage as a normal minion would take. Something also interesting about this clip that a lot of people don't know is that Jarvan's wall and his ultimate are actually coded in as minions, which is why you can see a bunch of 10k true damage around it when it dies because it's basically just a ring of minions getting instantly killed. Anyways, on the flip side of things, being a minion can also play to your advantage as well. Take this clip of Caps for instance, where he turned into a cannon minion just to tank more turret shots since cannon minions take mitigated damage from turrets. Honestly, it's pretty crazy how people figure this stuff out. Also, it doesn't end there because turning into a minion can also help you dodge abilities since some abilities like Galio's W doesn't hit minions. Pretty crazy. That's so f***ing broken, dude. What the f***? Did you know that ever since 2013, no team has ever won Worlds without a Korean mid laner? Seriously. Even in 2021, when EDG from China won, they still had Scout playing mid. And in 2018, when IG won, Rookie was the mid laner, who was also Korean. On top of that, besides Flandre in 2021, this is also true for top laners too. As you can see, Flandre is the only non-Korean solo laner ever since Season 2 to win a Worlds title. Anyways, to summarize though, according to this, there is a Unfortunately for Weibo Gaming, no possible way to win Worlds since Xiaohu is their mid laner. It was a good run though. So I just did a video talking about every single voice actor for every champion, which you should go check out if you haven't yet, but someone I didn't talk about in there is the lady who announces League in the game. The reason because of this is she actually chose to remain anonymous, but during Worlds 2015, she made an appearance and ended up introducing the players for the finals, which was pretty cool. Talk about a hype introduction though, I don't think it gets much better than being called out by the game's voice itself. Fun fact, this year's Worlds Final isn't just a battle of who's better at League, it's also a battle over determining which is better, Flash on D or F. It just so happens that every single Weibo player has Flash on D, and every single T1 player has their Flash on F. The stakes are truly higher than we thought with this one. So this person was at Legoland the other day, and apparently they were playing the Bilgewater song there. I guess whoever's behind their audio is a fan of League of Legends. This is what the new rank distribution looks like now that Emerald is added in. It's actually way more spread out now. 7.6% of players are in Iron, 20% of players are in Bronze, 19% in Silver, 19% in Gold, 16% in Plat, 12% in Emerald, 2.8% are in Diamond, 0.49% are in Masters, 0.044% in Grandmasters, and 0.019% in Challenger. The biggest difference is Silver is no longer the majority of the player base. So do you know how the League of Legends community is always on the hunt to find bugs for Yumi so that she's banned from being picked in Pro? play. This was especially true at Worlds last year. Well, in 2014, everyone, and by everyone I mean primarily NA, was trying to eradicate Rengar because at the time, Korea was unrealistically good with Rengar, and they were also murking all the NA teams with him. He only had a 42% presence, but during the Worlds event, he had an 86% win rate, winning 12 out of the 14 games played. Even Redditors were trying to join together to find a bug, and a bug was actually found by this guy where you can alt and TP at the same time and arrive invisible, but it was fixed pretty quickly. As the cherry on top, Dandy from Samsung White actually won Worlds that year and then picked Rengar as his world skin, so not everyone just has a permanent reminder about it. If you're ever wondering what a scrimmage schedule looks like for teams at Worlds, well, this is G2s. It's honestly kind of crazy how much they play each other outside of the Worlds games. It almost makes you wish they would stream it somewhere because people would 100% watch these games. It's actually super interesting to see how things played out in scrims versus on stage. For example, they beat NRG 12 out of the 14 times they played, which just makes the fact that they lost to them even crazier. Same with BLG. In scrims, they were 10-3 and three against them. I mean, I'll always root for NA when I can, but it is kind of sad seeing how much potential this team did have. Also, just for fun, here are the results from the scrims before Worlds against other EU teams. Pretty crazy. This is an older clip, but also one of the craziest things I've seen. Big is just recalling opening the shop like most of us do, but out of nowhere, Nidalee shoots a spear out and he still manages to parry it in time. I mean, first off, the spear is already hard to see since Nidalee has a skin and the walls are pretty dark, but second, this dude literally had the shop open. Like, at most, he had maybe a millisecond to react. How is that even possible? I had to rewatch this like five times and I still didn't see the spear. He's actually a robot. Then I just love how he plays it off like it's nothing. Even though this clip is pretty amazing, I think my favorite faker videos will always be the multitasking memes. They're just too good. Oh, 
With the Jax update a while back, a lot of people don't know that they also updated one of the best voice lines. This was a tribute to a kid who died of cancer years ago. Bravest hero I ever knew was just a kid. Here's to you, champ. Did you know that Surprise Party Fiddlesticks has a reference to Pennywise where he says this voice line when he runs into Gragas? Kiss me, fat man! <laughs> Boy. <laughs> you remember this game and play from Worlds in 2018? It was probably one of the hypest, almost backdoor moments in League history. IG was on the edge of 3 0 the defending world champions, and it was all thanks to the Shy popping off that game on Fiora. Yes, the same Shy who is currently in the world finals. Now, unfortunately, the Shy, as we all know, was unable to pull it off, but what a lot of people don't know is that the Shy actually ignored his coach during the picking phase when it came to picking Fiora. His coach told him to pick anyone but Fiora, and then he locked Fiora in anyways. So after they lost the third match, the coach benched the Shy because he was mad, even though he was their best player, and the only reason they almost won that game in the first place. Keep in mind, Invictus was still up 2-1 to one after that game, but after they benched the Shy, they ended up losing game 4 and things became tied at 2-2. Luckily, the coach put the Shy back in at the last moment and they still were able to close it out, but dang, that's pretty crazy risk by the coach to pull your best player in the quarterfinals of Worlds. I mean, I kinda get it, but imagine if they weren't able to win the series because of that. Led's voice lines have always been pretty aggressive and it definitely doesn't change whenever he interacts with Viego. Do you stand in the way of my love? A mistake. I'm just a yordle standing in front of you, asking you to shut the hell up! Speaking of Kled, have you ever heard the German voice actor for Kled? Well, you're missing out. Ich bin Kled, hoher Major, Kommodore der ersten Legion, dritte Multiplikation, doppelte Admiral, Artillerie, Kompanie, Vorhut, und du wirst meine Autorität anerkennen! I came across someone on Reddit the other day who spent $14,572.34 on League on this free to play game, which got me thinking, I wonder if anyone watching this video has spent more than that. If you have and want to show it, feel free to shoot me a message on Twitter or email it to me and I will show it in my next video. Hey, really quick, if you're enjoying, please consider hitting that sub button and of course, baby sea otter. Okay, I know this game is kind of a blast from the past, but this is probably one of the worst early game jungle gaps in League history. This game took place last year back in 2022 during the LCK Spring Split playoffs with DK versus Gen G. And in it, Canyon bullies the out of Peanut. I mean, it's a lot of stuff, so I'll try and speed run this as best as possible, but it's kind of hard to watch. To start, Canyon just invades and steals Gromp, and then he steals his Wolf Camp. And then he runs across the lane, takes a turret shot, and kicks him off of his chickens. Keep hunting Peanut down! Peanut's level two! Then Canyon keeps him off of his own chickens, wraps back around to take his red, and then kicks him off Krugs. Hecram then just tries to back after getting nothing, and then gets his recall stopped by Renekton. At this point, Peanut is still level two at almost five minutes into the game. Canyon then wraps around past the vision to once again steal his Gromp. Peanut finally gets his wolves, but then ends up just dying. Out from Canyon's perspective. Oh, top end. Wants to top get the takedown, has that pounce, so we'll be able to get oh. it. Oh. Oh. Ari wow. also comes down over to try and help, but then she ends up dying too. Then they invade again and kill him a couple minutes later. After Hecram spawns that time, Canyon goes over to the Raptors, and it looks like Peanut might finally get them, but nope, he just yoinks them away. And then Peanut gets kicked off of his red again. Peanut then goes over to the Krugs for the consolation prize, but doesn't even get all of them because of Jace. Finally, Canyon just ends up solo killing Ari in the top lane. At this point, they've secured over a 10k gold lead at the 25 minute mark. But the craziest part about this game is that they still ended up losing. After just a few terrible team fights, Genji was able to come back. Golden in the end, Ruler has locked down to the kill. On to Showmaker, Chovy finds the back line and Canyon is dead. And the guy gets the The essence comes in and I'm going bold. To go to Genji to focus the Nexus. And Genji from this moment. They will be able to win game five. I mean, can you imagine? The real question is how did Peanut resist from typing Jungle Gap after they won? This dude took League to the next level and coded it so that whenever he uses Aatrox's ult, his lights in his room turn red. I feel like you could actually get pretty creative with this. I know the Alienware computers already have a similar feature built into League, but the room lights would definitely make things more immersive. The only request I have is that Nocturne's ultimate has to turn off every light, including your monitor. It's for the memes, you know? I've seen some pretty messed up Nautilus hooks in my life, but this one? I don't know, this one might take the cake. I mean, 
what what do you do at this point i just how i don't get it i don't get it this is one of the craziest costumes or league pieces i've ever seen this guy made one of vi's gauntlets and not only does it look great but he can also move his fingers in that thing and it even has lighting and smoke effects pretty cool did you know that hobbits play league of legends billy boyd and dominic monaghan who played pippin and mary from the lord of the rings said they started playing during covid and they even went to the world's finals last year in san francisco i don't know if you heard but a while back some map changes for season 2024 were leaked which showed the baron pit might actually actually be completely gone. I honestly wouldn't be too surprised if these changes do go through because of the whole sides win rate thing going on right now, but nevertheless, it would make things pretty interesting. Viewership for Worlds this year has actually been way higher than people expected. T1 versus JDG peaked at 4.3 million views, which is insane. For reference, that's more viewership than the Worlds 2021 finals got, and almost two times more views than they got last year in the same game when they played them in the semis. Even though last year's Worlds felt unbeatable, there is a good chance that this year's final could break the viewership record once again the power of faker man so for some time now there's been a group of people trying to recreate league of legends in roblox and not gonna lie it's actually looking pretty good like these animations and effects are pretty freaking smooth you can even steal people's ultimate when you play silas it's kind of impressive it's also kind of cool seeing how each of the characters would look from a third person view perspective even if they are blocky characters still someone should probably tell them that they could just play league of legends as it is a free-to-play game here's some interesting world facts out of 110 players who came to world this year 40 of them are korean out of the teams t1 and team wales are the youngest at an average of 21 years old and loud is the oldest with an average of 25 the youngest player was pays from gen g at just 17 and then the oldest player was oppaman at age 31 imagine being 17 and being at worlds did you know that if you go into the shop and click on a chest you can actually see the drop rate of each of the items you can possibly get from opening it this also works for the masterworks chest or any openable item according to you guys jungle is by far the most difficult role in league at 66 percent and support is voted by far the easiest at 63 percent and lastly someone not too long ago released this cool unique accurate perspective on what it might be like if quinn's q hit you all right by the way this is probably gonna be my last episode of useless information unless i find more Timos for thumbnails so if you're an artist or honestly not an artist because i'll take anything then feel free to help me out by sending in your best Timo drawings to outside joke lol at gmo.com all right thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time of course a massive shout out to all my incredible patrons and members we had gooseman set ryan hagel and an extra huge shout out to my tier 3 patrons stefan and wolf seriously seriously thank you so much for supporting me and thank you for supporting me for so long too all right bye